whenever we transform something in 3D space, it always happens in a very particular order. First, the location is applied, then the rotation, and finally the scale. That's why it's always listed this way in the Object Properties interface. The reason this matters is, let's say we rotate a cube 45 degrees around the x-axis. Well, if I scale along the x-axis, then of course that seems fine, but look what happens when I scale it along the y-axis. It doesn't appear to be scaling evenly. In fact, it seems to be scaling in both the x and z. If we switch over to our Move tool, then switch our orientation from Global to Local, the axes are adjusted along the dimensions of the object and not the world. You can think of Global Orientation like the dimensions of the environment, and Local is more like the object's own left, right, forward, back, up and down. The default orientation in Blender is global, as you can see here, and we've already seen how we can override this transform on any object relative to its local orientation. As a refresher, let's add a cylinder and rotate it slightly. I'll hit R and X to constrain it to the X axis and rotate, and then just click to commit. If we want to scale it along the local Z axis, we now hit S for scale, then Z twice to toggle in to local transform. However, if we switch from global to local orientation as our default, then the opposite occurs. When we scale, move, or rotate, it will do so according to the selected object's local coordinates. We can hit S to scale, then only need to hit X once. Hitting X twice will toggle back into Global Transform. Now we won't be looking at these other orientations in this basics course, but in case you're wondering, if we had the orientation set to View, for example, that's when the coordinates are in line with whichever angle we're looking at the object from. Doing the same operation, Scale, Z twice, will toggle our scale into Global. Later on, you may find yourself needing to quickly switch between orientations, and there's a hotkey for this, comma. This will bring up your orientation radial menu from which you can switch on the fly. So far, all of our transformations have been in relation to the object's own point of origin. But moving objects around individually, or even box or lasso selecting groups of them, will get tedious quickly, so creating hierarchies, or parenting, can make selection and transformation easier. But it is important to understand that this changes the reference point for any object's transformation, because now it is in relation to a parent object. Let's add a cone on top of this cube. With the cone still selected, we can shift select the cube, Go to the Object menu, go down to Parent, and select Object. If we grab the cone, we can move, rotate, or scale it just as we'd expect normally. But watch what happens if we grab the cube and do the same. The cone comes along for the ride. This operation is called Parenting. You can think of it in this way. The cone is the child of the cube. The child can move independent of the parent, but where the parent goes, the child always follows. You can parent any number of objects to a single parent, or you can have a nested hierarchy of parent-child relationships. Hierarchies are a powerful tool in managing and manipulating objects in 3D space. The hotkey to parent an object to another object is Control P. You'll notice that there are a few parenting options. And the best way to show you the most common options is to first transform these objects slightly. I'm going to scale the cube down in the Z direction slightly, and I'm going to offset the cone 
and rotate it. If we select either of these, we will notice in its object properties that the location, scale, and rotations are not their defaults. Let's go through some parenting options here. The first one is obvious. We select the cone, we shift select the cube, we hit Control P and select object. We will see this dotted line between the points of origin indicating the relationship. To best demonstrate parent object keep transform, I'll just grab the cube, move it back a little and rotate it. Obviously the cone comes along for the ride. I'm going to duplicate this cube. Now let's select the cone, shift select the second cube and try to parent it the same way. The cone changes position, forgetting all of the transformations that happened after it was parented to the first object. If you want the cone to keep all of those transforms, that's when you select Object Keep Transform. We'll undo this again and try our next option, without inverse. The cone seems to have disappeared. If we toggle into wireframe mode, you'll see that the cone occupies the same location, scale, and rotation as the cube. It has inherited the transformations of the cube. This final option will directly show the relationship between child and parent, where the parent is, quite literally, the center of the child's world. I've set up two cubes. One is at the world origin with a location of zero in all dimensions. And one cube is positioned at X minus five meters. This sphere looks like it's sitting on top of this cube, but I've set its object origin at zero, zero, zero also. I'm going to move this sphere negative five along the X axis. Then I'm going to parent it to this cube and keep the transform. You'll see that the sphere's location is still x minus 5 meters. However, if we grab this cube and move it, the sphere moves along with it. Let's undo this. And now I'm going to parent it to this cube without inverse. Notice what happens to its x location. It now thinks that it's located at x equals 0 but it hasn't moved. That's because its location is at the same point as its parent's location. This is its new world origin. Okay, I'll undo this and return the sphere to its original position. And now parent it to the cube at x minus five using the keep transform without inverse. And this will do both things. It keeps the sphere where it's located but now look at the location x. It's set at 5 meters. This is because it believes its parent is at 0, 0, 0. The transform has been kept in relation to this parent, which means it's 5 meters in the positive direction along the x axis. This is an important distinction because it demonstrates how parenting fundamentally works. It tells the child that its origin is over here, and all of your scale, rotation, and location data should be in relation to this new point. To break the parent relationship, select the child object and use the hotkey Alt P. Again, there's a couple of options. Let's say we move the cube after parenting the cone to it. If we select the cone, hit Alt P to unparent, then it will revert back to the position it was in before we moved the cube. We can clear a parent and keep the transform, in which case it will inherit all the transformations but no longer be tied to the parent object. If this cube had been scaled down in the z direction, then the cone was parented to it, the cone won't automatically inherit that transformation. But if we clear the parent inverse, it will then have the transformation applied to it. The hierarchy in a parenting relationship is also shown in the outliner. Let's create a slightly more complex hierarchy. I'll parent two spheres 
to this cone and the cone to the cube. We'll just use the basic parent object function, nothing fancy. Let's now take a look at the outliner. You might see just the cube objects. No cone or spheres seem to be showing up in the outliner. But you'll notice that there's a small arrow left of the cube. It will reveal that the cone is nested underneath it. We can also click on the small arrow left of the cone, and you'll see that the two spheres are revealed nested under that. You can also parent or clear parents in the outliner. If we hold down Shift, click on an object, and drag it to another object, it gets parented to it. Shift, click and drag an object out of its nested position, and it becomes unparented. Parenting several objects simultaneously is pretty easy too. Now this cute little scene was modelled by Eva Vierbik Jomka. We have a table, and we have several objects which we would naturally move about were we to shift the table around in our scene. Now we could do a box select on everything. We'll shift select our table to make it the active object. Hit Control P and now all the selected objects are parented to the active object. But we can experiment with creating hierarchies between objects. We could try parenting the cutlery to the plate, the plate to the tablecloth. Try parenting the tablecloth to the table in the outliner. So if you move some objects and other objects are moving around when they're not supposed to, for example, then you now know how to quickly remove that relationship or reset up a different parent as you work. Once you've got your head around parenting and unparenting, you're ready to move on to the next lesson. <laughs>